Good morning, Bill Capsalis and Diana Mercer. Welcome to the second episode of Compass Coffee Talk. Um, very happy to have everyone join us this morning um, as we talk about um, the jobs outlook out there, uh, because we're certainly hearing some very sobering news. Um, we are hearing that there are 33 million people that have filed for unemployment since mid-March, so that's over two months' time. We're approaching a 15 to 20 percent unemployment rate, and we all know this very serious news. Uh, my name is Steve Hoffman with Compass Natural. Again, very happy to have you here. And uh, my co-host, Bill Capsalis, uh, both of us welcome Diana Mercer from Force Brands, uh, which actually links people with careers in the natural products industry. And while we're certainly, again, seeing some very um, sobering news out there in, in America's job landscape, um, Diana is going to give us a realistic perspective, but also one in which there are some positive outlooks and some resources for people to pursue. A company is also looking to hire because business uh, still has to go on. Uh, Bill, good morning to you. I see you have a large coffee cup behind you, symbolic of Compass Coffee Talk, I'm guessing. Yes, and um, I wish it was full right now with Dawsbog Coffee, our sponsor. Thanks, Eric, if you're listening. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for this uh, segment because um, I've known Diana for a long time and I know a lot of people in the industry know Diana and know Force Brands, but uh, there's a lot of things we don't know about Force Brands and a lot of the good stuff that they do in the industry and that Diana herself has done in the industry and so really happy to have her here this morning. Um, for those of you thinking about making a job transition or have been forced to make a job transition during this time, uh, she got some good tips for you, but also just um, a, a positive message about the uh, near and long-term future for all of us in the industry here. So, hey, I think without further ado, we should just turn it over to Diana and let her take us through her slides, if that's okay with you, Diana. Yeah, and if you might just uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got to force brands. New Hoper and had your own company for a while, I know. Mm -hmm. So um, just have been in the natural products industry for about you know, 15 years or so now, which seems like not a lot compared to you guys, but in any case, feels long to me. And um, Maybe Bill, I he's have, been in. You know, yeah, what are you <laughs> Um, over the years, I've grown more and more passionate about the mission uh, of, of bringing uh, more health to more people, better food to people, um, to impacting the planet uh, with sustainability initiatives and supporting small businesses and growing. So it feels like um, my work at New Hope and also at Force Brands really allows me to support the growth of um, growing brands uh, in a way that um, helps me to feel like I'm um, contributing uh, to the growth of brands that are really trying to make a difference uh, on the planet, in the world, um, and, um, you know, kind of bring uh, a, a, a greater level of uh, consciousness and awareness uh, about our planet and the foods we eat and, and our um, health and wellness. Um, so it's, um, it's a great um, group. So Force Brands um, started about uh, 12 years ago uh, in New York City, founded by a really passionate um, uh, founder called Josh Wand, as is often the case, and he and um, one other person, um, you know, Josh started out in the spirits industry. So we had, um, you know, uh, he realized the value of making connections and what a good networker he was. He's kind of a magical, powerful being in terms of networking. Um, so um, he, you know, really started out with a bang and uh, we've moved quickly from spirits to non-alcoholic beverages and started building brands like Cavita and Vita Coco um, and GT's Kombucha. Um, from the start, we started working with brands like Pine Bar and Cliff Bar, um, Chobani and so on. Um, and uh, over time, we grew um, to include uh, natural products. We really focus on the naturally um, uh, sort of 
the rapidly growing emerging brand and um, in the natural product space. And then we also recently added a beauty division, a pet division, and also cannabis division. So um, we cover a wide range of products that are sort of around what you put in your body and on your body and you want to feed your loved ones, your dogs, and so on. So, um, so we have offices across the country now in California, Pennsylvania, Denver now, and um, and also New York City, where our headquarters are. And um, we um, provide a variety of different services, um, executive search being one. Uh, and then also we have really robust job boards. Um, and one of the things that we're doing during this pandemic um, is starting a campaign called One More Job. And we're working with some of the biggest retailers uh, and um, businesses in the country to list all of the jobs um, that are out there and get as many people back to work as we can. So um, you can I see on our job board, we had a thousand jobs from Walmart just go live yesterday. These are the service industry kinds of jobs, the, the maybe temporary jobs, the, the shelf stalkers and the, you know, the jobs that, um, you know, are going to sort of the essential service worker jobs that are going to help people um, get through this crisis feed their family and so on. So if you come across a job and you tag it as one more job, we'll be able to do what we can to support that um, in the future. So if you happen to come across jobs you want to share, feel free to tag them with one more job on social media, on LinkedIn, um, and we'll help uh, promote them. So thanks for- yeah, Diana, um, it's, it seems to me that um, in doing some uh, reporting on what's going on, um, everybody's in need of workers from manufacturers to distributors to retailers, yeah. certainly. So, um, uh, you know, uh, we're an essential business really on the front line of this uh, crisis. So we may be one of the very few industries that actually is hiring. Yeah. And I'm going to get to that in one quick second while I pull up my, um, my uh, presentation here. And, um, Good. And uh, I'll be able we're to here, walk. So we're hearing from a lot of, of uh, people in the chat room that they don't see our faces, only our names in a black box. <laughs> so um, no, I don't. Okay. I hope they can see your presentation. Let's see what, what happens here. I don't know if Evan's in the background there, but I feel like something's going on with Zoom this morning where we don't have a really good connect, you guys. Hold on here. Um, okay, see. let's see if we can see your slideshow at least, Diana. Yeah, Hold and on. folks, keep letting us know. I think um, I think I Zoom is happened. being a bit overwhelmed. Agree. Okay, hold on here. Because it's a Zoom. common issue, and we we all have you know our our Wi-Fi. Can you see that, everybody? Um, so that's the uh, end of my second here. Go backwards. I, all I see is a uh, uh, top like navigation bar of your screen. Yeah. Top toolbar only as uh, Judy just pointed out. Thanks, Judy. Yeah. Um, so it seems like uh, our faces are back, which is a good thing, but we can't see your slideshow right now, Diana. We're only seeing the top navigation bar. Let me try to. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing as well. So again, I think it's just a bandwidth issue with people zooming in. There you there go. go, I'm seeing a slide. Here we go. Folks keep talking to doing. us, and also um, as we get questions in, uh, oh, face no images. Well, how how symbolic? Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, just joking around. These are tough times, man. Yeah, yeah, we'll make it through, guys. I'm I'm seeing her slides now. Me too. Me too. Um, but Diana, kind of take us through a little bit and we'll, we'll make do like everybody is during these times and everybody yeah. knows it's coming from the heart. Okay. Well, um, so as I mentioned about Force Brands, you know, we've, uh, there's a zillion recruiters out there, but our sort of area of expertise is uh, food and beverage in particular, uh, the better for you space. Uh, and um, on that continuum, we work with the baby brands all the way up to the Nestle's and Chobani's of the world. And, um, but at the same time, you know, our sweet spot is the rapidly growing emerging brand that needs help to grow their team. So we work across functions, uh, sales, marketing, operations, finance, um, including a ton of work on e-commerce and some dabbling in um, R&D and um, technology and so on, but you know we continue to focus on the main 
functions of growing a, a rapidly growing uh, brand and um, finding the right people at the right level. So if you have a baby brand, you're going to need somebody who wears hats, but as you get to be 10 million and 50, uh, 10 to 50 million, you're going to need another set of, uh, of experiences and skills. And then 50 to 500 million, you're going to need another set. So we know all the people at all the various levels and the people who have the playbooks and have built the brands before so we can place them in the right you know sort of order um, as you grow and uh, we work really carefully to sort of understand our clients to really be uh, useful uh, in terms of uh, an advisory capacity helping um, our brands understand their organizational design uh, strategic objectives um, what's going to look good to their investors how to position them um, to tell the right story to their uh, the talent they're trying to attract, how to maintain and attract and keep their talent over time by sharing with them, you know, what the industry standards are and what people are looking for, what people care about. We have a talent market report we publish once a year. And so we really try to be um, great partners with our brands as they grow so they can, you know, trust us, reach out to us, understand that we're here to support them and also find them the best talent that's going to stay and help them really turn the dial on their revenue um, and growth um, and, uh, and find them the best people for the job. Um, and because we have a deep, deep database um, of uh, more than 200,000 um, names, uh, we are able to really quickly and easily work nationally to find the right people for the right role. Um, and because we've been doing it for a long time, um, people really trust us and um, understand that you know, we can quickly find the right people to, to, you know, to solve their, their hiring needs. Um, so that's four brands in a nutshell. And um, feel free to, you know, one of the ways we work with people who are searching for jobs is a very collaborative approach. And you might see a lot of our um, content on social media and you might think, oh gosh, I have to reach out to all 55 recruiters. But really what happens is once you've contacted one recruiter, you're in our system, we have your resume, we have an understanding because we make it a point to have a deep dive strategy call with every person we come in contact with um, who would like to use our services. Um, and so once you're in our system and once you um, have, we have your resume, we share all that information among the recruiters and you use um, the recruiter that you spoke to first as your point of contact. So you reach out to them, you say, gosh, I saw this job in New York, and what do you think? And so we can connect you with the right people who might be working on that job, or we might know somebody who we can introduce you to. So just stay in touch with the recruiters um, that you've spoken with at Force Brands. Don't feel like you need to reach out to everyone because we do share, but stay in contact, stand, you know, kind of on top and say, hey, I'm still looking. Is there anything out there for us every couple of weeks? So that's a good way to make sure that we yeah. keep you top of mind. Diana, um, a question about that. So if you are a job seeker right now, would you recommend, what would you recommend as the sort of course of action? So do you, do you reach out to a recruiter uh, locally or in your, you know, pick, pick a city uh, in your eye? But what's the best path and, and how do you upload in your my presentation? I will absolutely share that. I'm just about to get to that, if you don't mind, just waiting for two hey, minutes yeah. until I get that Sounds part good. of the talk. Um, so I wanted to just cover a couple of things real quick um, about um, about the, uh, so I told you a little bit about Force Brands, but you know, as um, Steve was saying, sort of in his sobering opening statement was, um, you know, that it's not looking good out there really. However, um, I feel super blessed and um, probably, anyone who's in the food and beverage industry is counting their blessings because we do continue to eat and drink and food and beverage companies are continuing to hire. And um, uh, we would say that the landscape is nowhere near what it was and it probably will be changed forever. However, these trends are coming up and um, you know what we are seeing, it's not all doom and gloom. People are hiring and, um, and in particular, you know, if you, I'm going to talk about this in a minute um, about, you know, how to pivot to one of these areas, but in general, where we're seeing the most growth um, is around e-commerce, as you might expect. Online sales are up as much as 76%. Food and beverage online sales are soaring. They've peaked about 250% um, in the month of March. Um, and then other uh, categories like um, pet food, 
cleaners, and medical supplies are up as much as 500%. So these companies are scrambling to take advantage of the e-commerce uh, distribution channels to pivot their models from bricks and mortar to more effective e-commerce distribution. They need strategic people, they need tactical people, they need um, you know, e-commerce uh, you know, people who are gonna set them up with the right kind of SEO and, and all the different kinds of aspects of e-commerce um, is just booming. There's almost every brand I know is bringing on an e-commerce person if they didn't have one already. And if they did have one, they're building out the team. Wow. Uh, another sector that's just absolutely booming is the manufacturing sector and the, the operation side of things because, you know, plants are trying to struggling to stay, uh, to stay safe, to keep their workers safe. They're struggling to stay open. They need um, to rejigger all their supply chains, all their demand planning, um, you know, and their forecasting capabilities. They have to reforecast all their financials. So analyst roles are huge right now, demand planning, supply chain, safety roles, how to keep people safe, how to keep the products safe, um, and food quality and safety safe. Um, and so they really, those jobs, uh, you know, really, really are, are big right now. And the operational leadership that can sort of, um, sort of adapt and understand how a, a company needs to adapt manufacturing supply chain in order to meet these um, challenges is going to be a strategic leader that's very, very valued at this point right now. So um, those roles are also um, really big. You know, I, I heard Blair Kellison from Traditional Medicinals say, you know, it's not the person who's the strongest or the fastest or has the most money, but it's the brand that is able to adapt the most quickly that's gonna be successful in this landscape. So adaptation is huge. And, well, that, um, Diana, and that's interesting. I, I actually also just spoke with uh, Blair recently just to talk to him about how they're handling this as a manufacturer. And he mentions that he uh, feels that because his workers show up at their plant, the tea company, uh, he's often there at 6 a.m. just to thank them for coming in right now. Um, so I think we're hopefully seeing a greater value of uh, people that we once referred to as uh, unskilled workers, because we're finding now that these actually are skilled laborers that are also essential. So I just kind of see through a different lens right now. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And how that, um, you know, if leaders like Blair continue to model you know the sort of respect and admiration and care mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. the essential workers i mean it it's it's gonna you know the people in our industry tend to be you know have a lot of compassion and care and, and um, leadership qualities around that issue but hopefully it will bleed out into the rest of you know the e-commerce um the channels and also the bricks and mortar retail um, grocery channels because um, sure enough those people are putting themselves at risk of every day. Um, yeah, I mean my my feeling is we should be thanking the grocery workers like we thank our military right now um, because they are showing up to bring food to our table. But anyway, please carry on with your presentation as well. So the other area where we're seeing lots of growth still and no slowdown in hiring are the strategic salespeople um, at the higher level, sort of the director level and at VP level, um, folks who are able to sort of bring um, some insight and some ability uh, to interpret what the data is saying to rejigger the strategic sales vision. So how are, is a VP of sales going to approach um, this new this new landscape? How are they going to use data and syndicated data insights to be able to craft a new sales story? Because that's the kind of leadership that every brand is looking for right now. Nobody really knows what to do. And they're sort of saying, well, well, try this, try that. But they don't have a lot of money and time to try a bunch of new things. So if they can have, you know, hire a sales leader, a strategic sales leader who really understands e-commerce, who really understands um, you know, kind of uh, online um, meetings and meetings with buyers and to engage buyers virtually and so on. Engage, um, you know, making sure their distribution uh, is reprioritized according to um, 
you know, this, this new environment are the sales leaders that are going to get, get the job uh, in, this, in this particular uh, landscape. Are you seeing so, a lot of that um, right now? Are you seeing a lot of positions, Diana? Um, yeah, you know, yeah, we, we probably the sales, the, the high level sales roles, and um, surprisingly enough, CEO roles and president GM roles are are big right now. They really are, and it's a good time. You know, if you have a great strategy around how to um, navigate this this um, this crazy environment, um, then you're going to be the one that people are looking to. There's a vacuum of leadership. And if you want to step right in there and bring your insights uh, to the table, um, then there, you're going to be somebody who's highly valued. Um, and mm -hmm. we are seeing people moving forward because they need to know um, how, how to move forward. And, and, you know, revenue, you know, the salesperson is the revenue generator. Let, let me ask a question along that line. So maybe even putting your crystal ball on a little bit, you know, again, things are, you know, it's a unique time because never have we seen things like just shift so fundamentally across the globe as a result of the response to this crisis. So it's bringing up a lot of challenges, but again, opportunities. If you were advising uh, young career movers or even people in their mid mid life of their career, how to look ahead. Where do you see opportunities maybe of inventing uh, in yourself along your career path for how some of the shifts this might have brought? And I realize this is all brand new, so it's hard for anybody to predict, but are you seeing anything out there that oh, you I might know. say? We are seeing people kind of spring me a perfect segue to the next slide where you know you find yourself in this position you are on a career trajectory and suddenly you might be panicking because you're thinking wait a minute is my job going to go away you know i've been in field marketing for the last you know 10 years or i've been a career food service person what what what's up for me what it, what you know what what does it look like for me after everything gets back to normal because it's not really going back to to normal um mm -hmm. so the first thing that we are really encouraging people to do is really really reflect um take a serious look at you know it's it's going to be impossible to squeeze a square peg into a round hole after everything opens up again so if you're a food you know a field marketer you might really need to take a long, hard look about whether or not your expertise. And um, it's a difficult, you know, kind of thing to notice that, oh gosh, this is like, I might need to do some pivoting, but I don't think you need to panic. And you definitely don't need to throw the baby out with the bathwater because there are opportunities to sort of shift a little bit. You know, for instance, in brand management, there are generally two tracks. You can go toward the innovation side, or you can go toward the data and analytics and, you know, sort of brand and visuals and all that kind of side of things. So you, you can take a few courses or, you know, educate yourself or connect yourself or get some experience going in the other direction. So I'll talk a little bit more about that. But um, one of the things, unfortunately, that I see all the time is when people are nervous about finding a job or they're kind of desperate because they've been out of work a little bit, they, instead of focusing on the job they want, they tend to sort of widen focus instead of narrowing the focus. And unfortunately, that's not a great strategy because when you widen your focus, because you're saying to yourself, oh gosh, I could do that job or I can do this one or I can do this one and I'll do anything. You know what I mean? You're really watering down your expertise so that you don't get noticed. So what happens is you're applying for jobs that you know, you're not qualified for or that you believe you can do if you had the chance, but you've got 14 other people ahead of you who have already done that job. So you're not gonna get the interview or the call. So, so what I would always recommend during this time is to focus, focus, focus on exactly what you're good at, exactly what you are training to do, exactly what you want to do. And, you know, maybe you have to be a little flexible about your ideal perfect dream job, but, um, you know, you don't have to, you know, go into 
cigarettes or anything if you're natural products. So the idea is that, you know, you stay focused on what you want to do and you really, really, really only apply for the jobs that are a great fit for you um, because there's nothing more wasteful for your time or the, the client or the, the brand um, is to look at, uh, you know, for you to spend a ton of time tweaking your resume to try to make it fit a job that you're not really qualified for, or e emailing resumes into the void um, when the, the, you're not going to get noticed anyway. So it's better to spend, you know, apply for two jobs that you're perfect for than apply to 45 that you're um, questionable fit for, I guess. Hey, so, I um, had a quick question about that and this? just a comment. Does, does it seem like that's a mistake that you've noticed over the years that people make. They just go go for jobs that they're not really qualified for and find themselves wondering why they don't get calls or where's that come from? Oh, it's, it's the saddest thing. It happens every day. Every time I post a job on LinkedIn that says, this job needs CPG experience. Please don't even think about applying if you don't have CPG experience. I get <laughs> you know, hundreds of service provider jobs, people who've worked at law firms, and medical you know, centers and no CPG experience. So they just like, they've just wasted their time and mine. So it doesn't, it just doesn't serve anyone. So, you know, just be very, very careful. Um, you know, I might out of a, a job that has 500 applications, I might have three qualified people who really, um, who really have taken the time to match their skills with um, with the, the requirements of the job. If it says you need three to five years experience and you're just out of college as an intern, that you're not getting that job. Three to five years experience is what you need. So, you know, you need to apply for an entry level job. Um, so, so the focus, 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 and the clarity about what you're good at, um, what skills you bring to the table, and, you know, being realistic about the training that you need to get to the part, place where you want to be. Oh, I'd love to be a director. Well, what does it take to be a director? You know, and so you kind of have to look at all the, the, um, the training and the experience and, uh, and so on that you need, you know, to get to where you want to go. Um, and, and so overshooting doesn't really help you at all. And then, you know, the targeting piece um, on, on this slide is also really about um, you know, where do I find those jobs that are right for me? Because I just, the only ones I see are the ones on LinkedIn or the only ones I see are when I check, you know, Luke Circle, I think there's only five jobs in the world. So you really, really have to get real about um, not only what geography um, you're willing to live in, you know, everybody wants to live in Boulder, Denver, but, you know, maybe this isn't the time for, you know, maybe this is the time you might need to make a move uh, and take a, a great job that's a great fit for you in Portland uh, because, um, because that's where the opportunity is. So instead of trying to squeeze yourself into a job in Boulder that's not right, maybe you need to open up your geographical uh, expectations. Maybe you need to also open up your salary expectations. You know, if you're trying to pivot into a new channel, say of, you know, I've always been in innovation, but I want to go over to the other side of brand management. Well, maybe you need to, or I worked with an agency, but I'd like to go to the brand side. There's some kinds of salary um, uh, compromises you might need to make. You, I mean, you don't have to necessarily throw throw away your whole salary, but you and your experience, but you might need to just take a step back to accommodate the learning curve, and that can work. And they appreciate that you come at a less expensive price. So, um, so all that can work in your favor. But targeting um, a new salary expectation, a new geographical expectation, targeting um, you know where you're looking for the roles, uh, and um, you know uh, all the resources available to you. And those are, and this is hopefully answering your question from before, Bill. Um, executive recruiters, and I'm going to talk a lot about how to use executive recruiters to your, um, to your uh, advantage, but also the job boards. LinkedIn is a very, very important networking um, opportunity, and I'll share how that can lead to more in-person networking in a minute. But, um, you know, you really, really want to use um, in-person networking, not in-person necessarily kind of face-to-face, -face, even if it's virtual, that's really important right now. So joining webinars like this, 
getting online with, um, you know, all different kinds of trainings. Gary Hirschberg has an institute right now that's going on where you can make lots of connections with people. Um, you have, there's lots of um, a different, um, you know, online, there's a webinar every minute. Um, especially for our industry. Uh, and yeah, and since you mentioned Hirschberg Institute, Evan, if you could put up the uh, website for that one too. I think it's the Hirschberg Entrepreneurship Institute or something like that. It's a, it's a very good resource. Uh, Diana, I just want to interrupt one second. We're at the 10 o'clock mark, or that's mountain time. Uh, you're presenting some pretty important information. So as long as we have some folks stick around let's go over a few moments and but this would be a good time also folks if you have some questions uh, put them into the Q&A and we'll ask them of Diana and uh, we're going to go over just a few moments since uh, Diana has some really good information and you know jobs is a very very important topic to keep our economy running so uh, take it again Diana please yet to run over and I, 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 like, I like to be respectful of people's time so I'll try to um, be uh, brief here but um, you know the one thing that I really wanted everyone to be able to take away was to know that there's this whole plethora of resources out there for you executive recruiting is one LinkedIn is another in-person or virtual in-person uh, events are another and um, and then also um, uh, networking with your connections that you may uh, know your personal personal and professional connections. And These others become more important since we seem to be limited uh, to a return to in-person events, though I know we're anticipating in the fall being able to gather for trade shows again. Um, but again, instance, it's an interesting wrinkle in things right now. It is, um, but Naturally Boulder continues um, to expand across the country. Naturally Network now has um, uh, groups in San Francisco, in Chicago, in, um, in uh, Austin, Texas, and all over the country now. And so um, there's lots of- And lots they of post groups. jobs as well. Yeah, Evan, if you mm -hmm. could also post the Naturally Network or at least naturallyboulder.org and get there from there. But Diana, thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. And if you don't know about Luke Circle, that's also a fantastic job resource. It's not targeted specifically to the natural products industry, although it started there. And so it's very natural products industry heavy. We've branched out into technology and other private sector, uh, even um, nonprofit jobs. But um, it's a great, great place to look for roles because they don't just post junior level roles. It's all the way up to CEOs and um, VPs of sales and so on. So lots of great opportunities there and they get updated um, every week. So um, one of the things- What was that that you just you asked? Uh, you just talked about Diana. Uh, Judy Levin is saying she didn't quite hear that resource. Oh, wow. It's a, it's a website called lukescircle.com and they have uh, uh, jobs listings for the Bay Area and for mm -hmm. Boulder, Denver. Right, L-U-K-E-S circle.com. But that's also mm -hmm. on our blog post, all these resources, including Force Brands, Luke Circle, natural products industry jobs, other websites. The Naturally Network is a great resource. And I believe that's naturally Austin, naturally Chicago, naturally Bay Area, naturally San Diego, and of course the, uh, the hub naturally Boulder, uh, where Bill and I actually both serve as former presidents. We're quite proud to be associated in that regard. But yeah, that's a really great resource. So thank you. And I love this little box here that says for Ms. Paul. Um, do you think that job seekers do a bad job with communicating when they communities in front of them? Just curious. It's not so much that. It's more like the people who are happy in their jobs and the recruiter reaches out to you and you just kind of blow them off. Like, I don't want a job right now. Why should I talk to that person? Well, you really yeah. should. Because once you speak to them, they're on your side yeah. and they're your ally who can help you through the hard times because you never know from day to day. It's always good to have a recruiter that you have a relationship with in your pocket. 
So if one reaches yeah. out to you uh, and wants to get on the phone with you and wants to understand who you are and wants to help you, you should probably take advantage of that opportunity um, because yeah. not only can it help you, but it can help you connect other people to this recruiter. It can, you know, all we're wanting to do is support people in finding jobs. So even if that's not the right job that they've reached out to you about, you can say, well, gosh, let's talk about other jobs or, or do you have any other opportunities that are in X geography or do you have any other opportunities right. that are more director level? You know, and then we right. can really work on your side to make sure that you're getting, we're targeting the right roles for you. Right. So we Diana, we have a question. Yeah, go ahead, Bill. You, you see the question as well. I have some thoughts on this too, but it's, it's a very good question. So Maximilian Terrell says, I'm currently transitioning into a new career within food and beverage. I've noticed that most entry-level roles require experience. How do you find this experience if you have zero experience at entry-level? Um, so <laughs> Isn't that the age-old conundrum with uh, yeah. careers? It's like, don't come back till you get experience. Well, how do I get experience? Oh, no, it's hard. But, you have you to know, find right now, I just want to stick my two cents in on this. It's, I always thought that, you know, people who worked in retail and natural foods many times because they got that ground level experience working with customers and stocking the shelves and learning um, the grocery business and, and the, all the natural products out there. They were always in a great position to then either go work for brokers or manufacturers or, or like you said, you know, sales go on to sales with companies. And that seems to maybe still be an option pending Maximilian on where you're coming from. But I know right now the food business is hiring, retailers are hiring, and it kind of depends where you want to get in. But I know I've been asked, how, you know, how do you get into natural foods PR and marketing? And it's a windy road, you know, go work for a manufacturer for a while and learn that work for a publisher for a while and learn that it, it, um, it's the thread of all the jobs that you have. If you know, if you're, if you're kind of staying consistent, so <laughs> building experience can come a little bit, you know, it's not the straight curve. It's, it goes that way. Right. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's my two cents. I've also got a couple of thoughts about that. One of the ways you can get in, Maximilian, um, is to really target some of the very, very early stage brands and be willing to be very flexible on your salary. So if, you know, of course you wanna be paid for your work, but if you're able to be flexible, start at a lower wage, maybe get some equity in the company or work on a bonus plan, then some of the early stage brands that um, are very tight budget that are looking for people who are very, very eager to learn, very eager to figure stuff out on their own, very self-startery, can wear multiple hats. They can be very, very useful for a, a startup brand. And that's one way you can get your foot in the door and get a couple of years experience really, really um, in, in a lot of different uh, areas and then you can also decide where you want to focus if you've been doing sales and marketing or marketing and operations or operations and finance then you can decide oh I really want to focus on supply chain or whatever so that's one way and the second way is to really go to the big big brands like the Del Montes and the Danones and all of those because those guys like to hire um, people that they can train and um, one of the things that's most highly regarded in the natural products industry when you're moving to a startup um, or they're looking at an emerging brand is looking for a leader, they want somebody who's been classically trained at a large company. So a Haines Celestial, um, a Danone Wave, a Danone or whatever I guess it's called now. Um, so uh, the big brands uh, and the big CPG brands, Kellogg's and, um, and, uh, and uh, General Mills, you know, they have training programs and they also are, are open to bringing on, um, you know, graduates or entry level people and you get trained up and they move you around every six months to a different um, division and you get a lot of great experience and then you're ready to be hired out from there. Um, so, so that's how, that's, that's what I see. I, a lot of, um, you know, early stage career people who have come, you have spent two to three years at a big brand um, are always in high demand. Yeah. Thank you, Diana. That was excellent. That's why we brought you on the show. So, uh, <laughs> Like it's 10 after and I think uh -huh. we should wrap but um, 
I'm wondering if there's any other questions out there that we can jump on for the next minute or so. And if so, pop them in right now, you guys. Here's Diana's contact information for all of you. And if you miss this, we're happy to follow up with you. Just drop us an email or a note. Um, Diana, I, I have one uh, question for you to sort of um, try to get to a wrap up if we can. Um, what's your what's your one like nugget best advice for a job seeker today um, in this time with communications being the way they are for conducting a really good online interview? Because that's the way it's going to happen, right? It's going to be like your research. Because yeah. if you show up without understanding what the company, so you should be thoroughly prepped on exactly what the job description says. And you should have thought through in the job description what you have done to prove that you can do each of those items on the job description. Here's an example of how I, you know, redid the packaging or branding at a company. Here's um, an example of how I shepherded innovation or grew sales or whatever it happens to be on the job description. So you're gonna think through all the ways that you have a, a reflection of what's on the job description. Then you're also gonna make sure you understand the company really, really well. So you've looked at their website, you've looked at their, um, you've even gone out to the grocery and maybe ordered some of their products from Amazon so you could try them, you can taste them. Um, because you want to show the hiring manager that you're very, very interested and that you care about the brand, that you took the time to research. That really sets you apart from the people who show up and say, tell me about your company. Maybe I want to work there. So um, they really expect that you, um, you know, have done your homework uh, and that if you haven't done your homework, that's going to work against you. So um, check out the website, spend, you know, a long time figuring out, reading their press, reading their, you know, their um, links uh, to their social media, reading how they engage their customers, reading about their products, why they're different, why they're better, and then why you're aligned with that. And so you can make some solid um, arguments about why you're a great fit. Perfect. So my takeaway from that is do your homework and be prepared for that call, whatever it is, Zoom or um, telephone call, to be able to talk about that company's product. Really good, good advice there. Um, Steve, I'm thinking it might be a good, good opportunity for us right now to talk about our next uh, coffee mm -hmm. talk. And I had one, one last thing I wanted to bring up that was an early note, and I never frankly, I never thought we'd see this in our lifetime. Oh, and by the way, I want to mention, Diana, we're both veterans of New Hope Network, which was excellent training ground for communications and meeting so many people in this industry. Um, and we're unabashed advocates. Um, but also, here's where I never thought I'd see this in my lifetime, is you're helping people get career jobs in the cannabis industry. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I'm noticing a lot of people moving over there from natural products. Are you finding, and I probably shouldn't say this in the coronavirus era, but hot spots of where there are jobs for uh, cannabis. And let's yeah. close on that. And then Bill, you can lead us out with announcing our next guest. Okay. California is still a hot spot for cannabis. Colorado has is faltering slightly in terms of um, growth. A lot of brands that were growing last year and the year before are contracting a bit. And so we've seen some layoffs. We've seen some movement from people who took a leap from food over to cannabis and now they're kind of back in food. And so I would say, um, you know, because it's an uncertain environment, that was not entirely uh, unexpected. Um, and because it was growing so fast, people were like, whoa, can we really sustain all this growth? And the answer was, you know, maybe and not always. So a lot of the brands mm -hmm. are kind of contracting, going back to their basics, going back to their, you know, skeleton crews or kind of reinventing themselves because of all of the competition um, and, and the craziness around trying to get distribution and regulatory um, approval to sort of market their products in different states and so on. So it's still a complicated um, play, uh, thing, but um, a lot of, there's a lot of movement uh, and we're still seeing lots of growth in, Cal in the California market particularly. And I would say, in, you know, healthy growth in, in Colorado too, but not as wild west as it was last year okay so your, your earlier point maybe 
you want to get involved in the cannabis space, you might have to move to California, but there could be a really cool job out there for you right now. Yeah, I'd say that's yeah, probably true. That. Well, so I'll, I'll, um, I'll take us out, Steve, and then um, you can get some final uh, closing thoughts. First of all, thank you, Diana. Thank our, you for having me. Coffee Talks was, you know, try to bring really good practical information and you've, you've accomplished that today for us. And I, I know we could, we could talk for two hours with you and <laughs> I really appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you, Forest Brands, for lending us Diana for 40 minutes this morning. We appreciate that. Um, so uh, we'll, uh, I'll just lay this out there. Our next uh, Coffee Talk is June 3rd. Got the date right there, right, Steve? Mm -hmm. Same 3rd, time, and, same channel. Same time, same bat channel. Um, we are uh, uh, pleased to welcome on that day a gentleman named Milton Zimmerman, who is with Presence Marketing out of Chicago. I would, I think it's safe to say a career natural foods veteran and um, all around amazing guy. And we're not necessarily going to talk too much about Presence Marketing or how, how to work with a, your broker on that call, but we will probably touch on it. We're going to talk about the value relationships and how important it's been for Milton over his career and for all of us in the industry. And I think Diana probably can attest to that as well, how important these connections are and um, career lifetime relationships. So we are really going to uh, talk to Milton about that and how important that's been for him in his career and what that's been like for Presence to have these amazing relationships with retailers and with brands all across the country. So. Uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Steve for a couple final comments. And Diana, again, from, from me to you, thank you for saying yes when I asked you. And great to see you. And I uh, hope you're faring well in all of this. Thank you so much for having me. It was a great pleasure to join you this morning. Diana, thank, thank you. you. You'll be getting one of our cool swag mugs <laughs> along with a uh, bag of Das Bog coffee, our sponsor for Compass her. Coffee Talk. You know, I was thinking about this really, folks. We're trying to engage the senses, you know, the smell, the taste, the community, the touch, um, really all of it. So I want to also thank our participants. Thank you for being a part of this. Tune in on June 3rd with uh, Milton Zimmerman, Executive Vice President of Presence Marketing. Um, these guys are one of the leading brand builders out there in the country, and we're sure to learn a lot. Bill, thank you again for co-hosting. Y'all have a great day. Take care now.